fashion designers you welcome back to class this is modern woman apparel i want to say a very big thank you to all my subscribers and if this is your first time here you're, you're highly welcome please join us by hitting on the subscribe button turn on your notification bell so to get notified whenever i upload a new video thank you so guys in today's class we are going to be doing the cutting and sewing of a bustier dress with back loops and for this class, we'll be making use of our patterns. Remember, in the part one of this class, we have already drafted the patterns. And in this part, two, we'll be transferring these patterns to fabric and doing the sewing proper. So we have, um, this is our front here, and this is for the back. We also have the skirt pattern here. So if you're here to watch the part one of this class, check on the comment section. you find the link to the part one of this class so without wasting much of your time let's get right into the tutorial of the day so first thing first we are going to transfer all these patterns to fabric with all the necessary seam allowances we're going to start working on the upper part first and after the upper part we'll go over to the down part which is the skirt part of this gown so guys for the front you can see what we have we have gone ahead to transfer my pattern to fabric this is half inch here so you add half inch to this side and also add half inch to this side to join the both of them together we need half inch on top to turn this with the lining we need half inch by the armhole for the sleeve then this side here i added 2.5 inches it depends on the amount of seam allowance you normally work with then on the damp part here we need half inch to join this part here to the skirt part so the same way i cut out this you can see i have also cut out my lining fabric and this is my interfacing for the main fabric and lining so you can see so so the same way you cut out this also cut out your interfacing for your main fabric and lining remember you can make use of any interfacing of your choice now this is for the back part here remember we have already added all the necessary seam allowances to the back so all you need to do is just to place it on your fabric and cut the same way you cut the main fabric you also cut out your lining and the interfacing you'll be needing for both the main fabric and the lining so after this the next thing you are going to do is to notch your underboss so please do not forget to notch your underboss on this front part so the center front is on fold we do not have any opening on the center here so it's on fold but for this side front here you need two pieces of it so the same two pieces is going to apply to all of the side front why for all of the center front they are all going to be on fold now for the back you also need two pieces of fit two pieces for the main fabric for the lining and for all the interfacing you'll be needing for both the main fabric and lining so having said this the next thing i'm going to do is to take this to my ironing table and infuse all my interfacing on both the main fabric and the lining and i'll show you how to attach your breast pad after infusing all the interfacing on the main fabric and the lining here's what i have the next thing we are going to do is to cut out our breast pad now you can use any breast pad of your choice for this i used a medium weight wadding so to place your wadding for the center front all you have to do is to come down half inch from the top part of your center front half inch before placing your wording and you're going to stop on the under bust line the reason for this half inch is to avoid any interruption or bulginess by the time you are joining this main fabric with the lining now on the side front you know we already have half inch here for joining so you are going to make a mark on that half inch and from there you divide your nipple to nipple by two and add one to it so let's say you are using nipple to nipple of seven inches by the time you divide it by two you have 3.5 and you add one inch to it you have 4.5 so the 4.5 you are going to start measuring from this half inch to this very part here and on this top part here, you are going to come down as well by half inch and from this half inch you connect to that 4.5 and also to your underburst if you are using a gum wadding or fusible wadding, you take it straight to your ironing table and gum it to your main fabric. And if you are also not using a gum wadding, all you need to do is to use your hemming gum to iron it to your main fabric. Now for us to start stitching, first thing we have to do is to pick up the center front and any of the side fronts. Now we have to match the underbust notches, so that is why it's important for you to notch the underbust. So match the underbust notches and pin it down. After that, you take it straight down to your sewing machine and stitch with half an inch seam allowance. Now you can also use your chalk for a beginner to make a mark there. 
make a mark give half inch mark all through then when you take it to your sewing machine all you need to do is just to follow the half an inch mark you have made so after i'm done sewing this part here what i'll do is to take the other parts also match up the on the bust notches pin it down and also take it to my sewing machine and sew with half an inch seam allowance so the same thing i did to this very front part i'll also do it to the lining part of this front so after you are done joining, the next thing you are going to do is to turn it over this way and check what you have done. When you are satisfied with the outcome, the next thing you are going to do is to notch the underboss. After notching the underboss, you pick up your bow. You pick up your bow and place it underneath like this. And open press the same lines. So whatever you have done to this, the same way you open press the same line of this, you also open press the same line of the lining fabric. So guys, after you are done pressing, this is it. The next thing to do is to turn this with the lining. So you are going to place it right side facing each other like this. Place right side facing each other and sew the neckline and the two sides leaving the m hole and the damp part so after you are done stitching the upper part and the two sides so all you need to do is to notch the necklines and after notching the neckline what i normally do is to trim down the seam allowance so i'm going to trim down the seam allowance and after that i'll turn it over to the right side and after i'm done turning instead of top stitching what i normally do is to insert my hemming gum on the neckline here so i'm going to put it inside this and use my iron to press it far this way it stays flat and neat so after ironing the next thing i'm going to do is to close up the armhole and also the down part so guys as you can see we are done with the front part we'll go over to the back part now for the back you can see the two back pieces that we have we are adding loops to this so we are going to add the loops before joining the main fabric with the lining as you can see i've already done one part and i want to show you how to do this other part now you have to place your fabric right side facing up and go in from your center back by half an inch and rule a chalk straight up note that this half inch mark is on the right part of your fabric so you can see my loop here so the next thing i did was to cut out two and a half inches so each of these is two and a half inches this depends on how wide you want the loop to be but i want mine to just be 0 0.75 now after this line here also come down by half an inch because we, you know we already have half an inch here for the upper joining after placing this half an inch mark, I'll start placing my loops inside. Now, the first one I did, what I did is to come down from the half an inch by 0 0.25 before placing my loop. And after the first loop, I did 2 inches apart. Now, this depends on how far or near you want your loops to be. Now, for this part, since I've already done the other part, all I need to do is just to bring in this very part here and match it up like this. So, since you have already done this part, you can use it to measure where you want this to be so that by the time you wear it, the both loops, all the loops will be matching up. So, I'll put it this way. This is where the half inch is. Now, mark here. Mark here. So having gotten this, I'm going to start placing this loop here, this way. The folded part has to be inside, not outside like this. So you place the folded part inside, stitch, place the other loops until you fill up the marks. After you are done with the loops, the next thing is to pick up your lining fabric and place it on this right side facing each other like this. So stitch the center back on top of this stitch that you have made here then stitch the neckline and stitch the side leaving only the armhole and the down parts so guys after you are done joining so this is the center this is the center back the neckline and the side so you notch this junction here chop off this junction here and turn so turn it over and give it a good press 
so guys after you are done ironing the back part you top stitch on the armhole now before you top stitch on this part here you have to create a channel for your boning now this boning is optional to insert boning here is optional and it depends on the kind of back you want to have so if you want to have this back you can see the back on the picture there then you have to insert boning but if you also want this kind of back then you do not need to insert your boning but for this i'm going to insert this plastic boning here and you can see i've also created the channels here the next thing to do is either to iron your boning to make it flat or in the absence of your iron you can also insert it this way so i'm going to show you how to insert it in the proper way now the first thing to do to your boning is to use your scissors to trim out the edges so you can see the trimmed one here and the other one so you don't need to insert it this way you have to trim it so you can see what i have here. you can see that the both are not the same so trim it to be like this and after that you can also decide to insert it but for me even after trimming i still use my paper tape to cover it up the essence of this is for it not to poke your client and after you are done covering the edge the next thing to do is to insert it into the boning channel making sure that your boning do not get to the half inch you left for your joining allowance and if you are making use of this very one here the one that you did not iron after trimming the edge and um, of course covering it with your paper tape all you need to do is to position it this way not this way so if you position it this way it's going to be bulgy but when you position it this way it will follow the body shape of the person wearing this so you position it this way and insert i hope you understand so having said this i'm going to go ahead now and insert my so this is what we have for the back remember you also have to put your you have to trim the damp part of your bone in as well and also put your paper tape before closing it up so you can see my boning is half inch before this very line here before this damp part so this is what we have for the back part and this is our front the next thing we are going to work on is the skirt part so i want to show you how to cut out this front part because if you eliminated your dark like i did then cutting this front part can be a little bit tricky because as you can see the center because of the dust that we pushed in the center has we have altered the center it's no longer straight so if you still go ahead and place your fabric like this to cut out you have not eliminated the other part of the dust the dust that came from this other part you have not eliminated you only eliminated the one from this other side so right now i'm going to show you how to manipulate your pattern in order for you to totally eliminate all the dirt from your skirt fabric now the first thing to do is to put your fabric on fold as you already know this is the front part and we are cutting it on fold so put your fabric on fold i normally cut from this savage side so this is the length i'm going to so you can see that this part here from here to the hip line is straight you only have from here to the waistline which is not straight so i'm going to start pinning I'm going to pin the damp parts and when i get here i'll also pin here this hip line here now i also come to this hip line here and pin The next thing I'm going to do is to use my chalk to mark out here. So if you have not added this seam allowance I added, all you need to do is to add your seam allowance. So use your chalk. So whether you have added your seam allowance, you still have to use your chalk to trace out this waistline you see here. It's very important. Please don't forget. Now after tracing it out, the next thing we are going to do is to cut. can see how i'm placing my hand and i'll cut till i get to this hip line here when i get to this hip line i'm going to stop by the time i stop i'll remove these three these three pins i have here leaving only the one here and then i'll tilt the paper this way so that this center here this center of this paper can now correspond with the center of the fabric 
so you can see what I have then I'll pin it down by the time I pin it down I'll continue cutting so you can see because we tilted this you can see that our waistline has shifted up which means that if you did not put this chalk here you'll be cutting a fabric that is longer than the skirt your skirt length so when i cut from here to the chalk i made what i'm going to do is to remove my paper so you can decide to remove your paper or you just shift it at this point you no longer need the paper so just cut out from the chalk that you made So guys, this is it. By the time you measure what is here now to here, it will correspond with what is here to here and your length will still be the same. So this is it for the front. Now, because I added 1.5 inches here for the hemming allowance, I'm going to fold in 2.25 here. So I'm going to fold in 2.25. After folding 2.25, I'll use the rest of this to cut out the lining for the front. So for the back pattern, we are not cutting the center close because as you can see, we already have our zipper allowance. So all you need is just to place it here and cut out two pieces of it. So you can place it and pin it down and just cut out two pieces of it. So guys, this is it. The next thing I'm going to do is to notch the center back because you can see that these two are looking curvy already. You may not be able to differentiate which part is for the center and which part is for the side so i always use a notch on the waistline here to indicate the part that is the center back now the next thing i'm also going to do is to fold in remove my pattern fold in 2.25 and use the rest of this to cut out the lining part and also indicate i also notch the center back of my lining after cutting out my lining we we'll proceed with stitching so for this skirt you can see my lining remember i told you that it is shorter than my main fabric so the first thing you have to do is to join the down part of the skirt right side facing each other with the lining after joining the down part so remember the 1.5 inches or whatever you use for your hemming allowance you notch that point so from that point you are going to pull your lining so by the time I pull from this notch point here, so you can see that my main fabric and my lining are meeting up now. No one is longer than the other. So what I'm going to do now is to continue sewing from this notch all the way to the waistline for this part. From this notch here all the way to the waist of the skirt. After joining the front part, you turn and set it aside. Now for the back, before we turn, we are going to work on the waistline. This is my zipper allowance. My zipper allowance is 1.5 inches. So this is the mark of the 1.5 inches. And from there, I will mark out my 2 inches. This is where I will join the down part with the upper part. Remember when we were making this, I shifted from the center back by 2 inches before getting this very line I have here. So from that 2 inches, that is where I'm going to start attaching this upper part from. So what I've just done is, after my seam allowance, after the 1.5 inches for my seam allowance, I also went in again by that 2 inches and I stitched. So stopping at that in 2 inches. Now what I'm going to do is to notch. So make a half an inch notch here like this so you are going to make a half an inch notch here so that by the time you turn it this is what you are going to have so after turning you can see what i have now this very part here is where the upper part will sit on now what i'm going to do now is to give this a good press then we'll proceed to the joining so for this skirt, after you've turned it over and given it a good press you top stitch the upper part the waistline so this is the front here and this is the back so from here you top stitch so before attaching this lower part with the upper part what we are going to do first of all is to join the two center backs so after joining the two center back you attach your zipper 
so after joining the zipper this is what we have now the next thing to do is to join the upper part with this lower part now you have to bring the upper part and position it this way and stitch with your half and inseam allowance now this very part here is where the back opening will be so you join this part here where you have the top stitching with your half an inch also join this other part here with your half an inch after joining you set the back part aside now for the front part all you need is to notch the center of this lower part and also notch the center of this upper part now you bring them right side facing each other matching the two notches together and stitch with your half an inch seam allowance and once you're done with that all you need is to place the front and back pieces right side facing each other and shape the sides so you're going to join the two sides with your body measurements so after joining the sides this is what i have this is the front looking so beautiful and this is the back part now what is left is the sleeve remember you can make use of any sleeve of your choice but for this my clients want an off shoulder elastic pulse sleeve and that is what i'm going to use for this very sleeve now for the sake of those that are just joining us i'm going to be explaining how i did this sleeve you already know we have so many tutorials with off shoulder puff sleeve on this channel so i've gone ahead to cut out my fabric for the sleeve now i'm going to show you how to go about the calculations so to calculate your sleeve this is where our strap to strap also comes in now remember that for this i use a strap to strap of 10.5 for the front and also 10.5 for the back now when you add it together 10.5 plus 10.5 you have 21 inches now the round shoulder measurement i'm working with is 45 i'm going to subtract 21 from the 45 and when i do that i'll have 24 then that 24 i'll divide it by 2 I have 12 so that means that 12 is what this part of the sleeve and the other 12 is for this part of the sleeve now to cut your sleeve if you are going to determine how many inches you want to add to the 12 inches to get this elastic sleeve so for this i'm having 30 inches here the width of what i'm having here is 30 inches because i multiplied the 12 inches by 2.5 so it depends on how full or how gathered you want this sleeve to be you can multiply by three two four it all depends on you so i multiplied the 12 by 2.5 to get this 30 inches and the length of the sleeve i'm having here is 16 inches so this is it this is for one of the sleeve and this is for the other sleeve i've also gone ahead to cut out my lining fabric now you can also use this sleeve without a lining fabric all you need to do is just to fold to create the channel where your elastic will pass through so you are going to fold it up and down here where your elastic will pass through but for this because i'm using a lining fabric for this i'm going to go ahead and turn this fabric with the lining and after that i'll show you how to cut out the armhole of this sleeve so after turning with the lining all you need to do is to make a top stitch here to create the channel so the top stitch the space has to be wide enough to accommodate the size of the elastic you're using so you make a top stitch on the upper part of the sleeve and also on the down part of the sleeve so now it's time for us to cut out the armhole of this sleeve so what we are going to do is just to fold this into two like this So after folding, what I'll do is to turn this dress here to the wrong side so you can see the wrong side of this. Then I'll place it on the sleeve like this. Properly arrange it on the sleeve and cut out. So after cutting, this is what I have. The next thing to do is to insert my elastic in the channel and attach this to the armhole of the dress. So guys, I've gone ahead to insert my elastic so this is the elastic i use now the size of channel you create depends on the size of the elastic you are using so for the upper part here remember i have 12 so the size of the elastic i used inside this is 7 inches circumference of the sleeve is 12 and i use 10 inches for the down part but for the upper part i used 7 inches now it is time for us to attach as you can see i've already attached the sleeve on this very part here and i want to show you how to attach your sleeve on this other part now what you're going to do first of all is to make sure there is a little space here as you are joining the sides of this dress make sure you leave a little space on the armhole area now for this 
I'm going to measure. So I have my strap to strap as 10.5 for both the front and the back. So the back 10.5 and the front 10.5. Now we have already taken two inches from the center back. So this 10.5, I'm going to divide it in two two, and I'll have 5.25. So I'll take away to measure the to get my 5.25 for this very part. What I'll do is to step out by that two inches, and after stepping out by the 2 inches, I'll mark my 5.25. This is where my sleeve will start. I'm going to place my sleeve here and stitch. Also come to the front. From the center front, you mark out your 5.25 to the left and 5.25 to the right and make a mark. And the rest becomes your seam allowance. So what you do is to go ahead and attach. So this is the armhole side here, as you can see. Now what I'm going to do is to place it right side facing each other like this. So this is right side facing each other and I will stitch. I also turn it to this very part here and join this part right side facing each other and I will join the armhole. So after joining the armhole side, all you need to do is to turn it again to the wrong side and join here. So you join this side. So guys, after I'm done attaching this very side, what I will do is to weave all the raw edges then make my lace for this the rope i'm using i'll put this on my mannequin and let's see what we have so guys this is the outcome of our dress you can see the back view on my client thank you so much for watching please do not forget to subscribe like comment and share and also follow me on my facebook page at modern woman sewing tutorials i'll see in my next tutorial i am modern woman bye for now